back at the uh, Rappler News Center and we're very happy to have with us here the former chairman of Comele, Christian Monson. And we're, we've invited him to come and share with us his insights and uh, some of his observations about our preparations for tomorrow. Yeah. Are we ready for the elections tomorrow? Well, right now, uh, as far as I can see, all the, um, well, or most of the, uh, of the issues that have been raised, apparently, uh, uh, Comelec is addressing those. Uh, like, for a while, there was no technical evaluation committee report. Apparently, this, that has come in already, yes. for example. Uh -huh. um, there are things that are still hanging without really any explanation on, on why they are not uh, being publicly aired, like the issue of uh, certification the uh, certification of the returns that are being transmitted supposed to be digital and uh, and there is no mention of public and private keys and how to transmit this and so on and so it raises the question among the, the experts the IT experts is there going to be digital certification uh, on, on, on this thing what is a digital certification well, so, in other words when you send that we didn't transmit the return you will certify that this is the correct one the, the ones who are certifying that are the BEI for uh -huh. example uh -huh. so uh, in, and in order to do that there are certain uh, passwords it's like your credit card mm -hmm. there's a password and on top of that there's a number yes right on the card yes right? that's uh -huh. the public key. The private key is your password that you only know. I see. And so and who gives that certification? That that is supposed to be done by Comelec with the Department of uh, Science and Technology. And that hasn't been done. Apparently, we don't know. Uh, but there is no public announcement that that's all been done. So I, I hopefully they've they've done it. Okay. Uh, what does that uh, What does that guarantee if you have a public well certification? Well, it gives you it gives you assurance that it's coming from the right source. Uh, okay, yeah. all right. Because, uh, as you know, we've had transmission problems. Yes, yes. Uh, big one. The In the past? The, yes, I mean, the 20, th something like 23% were not transmitted to the central server in 2013. More because than double the 2010, which was about nine. Okay, and what was the reason for the non transmission? There have, at been, that time? No there have been no official explanation other than failure of transmission. Uh, on that 23 percent, which is rather large, yes, and yes. that that didn't go through what they call the the transparency server. That you go to media. The, that's the one that you guys Where get. Right? You KBP, get uh -huh. majority get. party, minority party, mm. and so on. Mm -hmm. And um, and they cannot have not fully explained why uh, that happened. It's it's probably failure of communications. Okay, yeah. but. Uh, when, when something... In fact, that's a greater danger, I think, failure of, of transmission. Than anything else? Yes. 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 Um, if they don't... Uh, in the past, I know that the problems were there was no electricity, electricity was cut off, there were no backup batteries, there were no substitute machines. Mm -hmm. Isn't this part of that problem? Well, uh, precisely the problem that worries people is that why is they did increase in 2013 in 2010 mm. only nine percent yes 2030 it was 23 uh -huh. percent should not right yes given yes. the fact that the, the, the communications companies are saying that they have they have already a fuller coverage and all that yes and then yes. they had the, that we call the big gun where where they go satellite yes that that's part of it so with all of that how can there have been so much failure of transmission? That was present in 2013. Yes. I see. Okay. And so uh, I hope that the Comelec is doing something about it to All put right. those uh, in place. Okay. Okay. You know. What What else are your well, concerns? The latest one is the question of in the testing that's coming out, uh, you know, over in the social media about how the receipt does not tally with what people say they they voted for. Okay. How they bought it. All right. Uh, it's uh, the, the way it's being reported. There are about what ten areas in the Philippines, one or two abroad, and so on. It just struck me as I was reading the complaints that all the complainants never said which precinct that happened. 
right? So if I were to accumulate, I'd call up each of these people. Uh, one of them is uh, uh, as a congressman, uh, Nogales of Dava, who, who has also said this happened in this area, mm. and call, call for his help and say, can we, can we just uh, ask for your help? Get the persons around there in a way, the areas that you're citing, uh, bring and, and ask which precinct that happened so that the Comelec can check. Yes. Because if you go to the Comelec today, they'll say, well, you know, we had no evidence. There is no hard evidence on where to check. Mm -hmm. Because uh, apparently the election officers in the areas, but that's a general area, reported that it was not, re it was not reported to them. Mm -hmm. So, is this a failure of the machine or...? No, no, the question is, is this, is this one of those, uh, is this one of those uh, black, you know, operations? Black propaganda. Black operations. Yes. Because it's very easy to say later on the boat is, is uh, different, should not be like this. Uh -huh. And we had this experience. I see, I but see. But I think everybody should cooperate with the Comelec to verify those complaining, the names, the precinct numbers, whether it's properly reported to the election officer and so on. Yes. Just, just to put the record straight, because at this time, there's a lot of anger in the social media commentary about planned massive, right? Now she let did. me say, let me state here that it's virtually or entirely impossible to have that kind of manipulation in massive scale. I'll explain. There are about 92,400 precincts. And each one, each of the, com each of the machines has two SD cards, you know, the, yes. you know what, that secure digital, yes. right? Yes. Now, this can only happen, you can only manipulate those if you have internal connivance. Because you, you have to change 92,400 if you want really Cards. massive scale yes. or if you want 10,000 or 20,000 massive scale yes correct yes. you can do it for 10 15 20 uh, areas right if you if you have 20 insiders there uh -huh. but can you just envisage doing it on a massive scale on a national vote yes now if it's a, if it's local elections Possible. Possible. Yes. Yes. Mayor and so on. Yes. But to insinuate that you can you can elect a president on the basis of manipulation of ninety two or I don't know, maybe forty thousand. You imagine what it would SD take cards. in terms of the logistics and to the people steal the involved. Cards. Yes. In being able to substitute. Yes. Yes. Right. Okay. And yet people are saying, "Oh, this is it. This is the." Is that the only way? <laughs> no, but but you cannot hack it from the outside. You can't. No, you have to hack it from the inside. That's why you need an internal, internal uh, con conspirator. Mm. Mm. And that should be explained because now there's a lot of agitation and saying this is this is evidence that this is what people plan to do, mm. but then people never question. So do we have the evidence? Yes. And say, is it possible theoretically? Yes, and you're saying it's not. On massive scale, no. Okay. You have to substitute. Yes. Nice. So, w what do you make of all of these speculations or statements that are being made about if you know we might win and the vote, we might win there, but we we'll get cheated think, on the uh, count. Well, you know, I think uh, uh, there are some there are some people whose job it is to create doubt if they lose, and uh, they're probably preparing already. It's a preconditioning. Uh, yes, and. Uh, that's why it's very important for everybody to, co to cooperate with the COMELEC to verify these accusations with hard facts. Okay, that's well, well that's a good warning. Yes. And uh, when, when verifying, for example, uh, we are told that we have to drop the, the receipt in the box, right? Yeah. Yes. And uh, when we drop the receipt in the box, we don't have any more evidence, correct? Yeah. We, we're not holding any more evidence. No, but you, you report it first. Eh? There is a process, Before. yes. That's okay. Right. Okay. Just a minute. Oh, okay. Um, Christian, listen? yes. <laughs> we, we move back to uh, a, a press call now being conducted by the chairman of Comelec, Andres Bautista. 
and we'll be right back with former chairman Christian Monson. This is, this is what I think it is. So, Sir, si Angel, I think, has a question. Sir, on a different issue, kung petition po na sinayal sa Lucena Comelec para akitan yung pag-appoint po ng incumbent mayor sa pinsan niya na ginawang chief of police and action ng Comelec? Ah, hindi ko pa nakikita yun yung answer, pero kanina nag-usap ko ng June at ni Robert Wilson. Ay, hindi lang pakala ng mayor, si mayor din yun. Okay, that was uh, Chairman Andres Bautista of Comelec giving a press conference, but apparently we have uh, bad audio lines, so we could not decipher exactly what he was saying. But Christian, you were just saying earlier that uh, these are some of your concerns which you have transmitted to Comelec. Uh, yeah, well, uh, yeah, uh, I have I've, uh, I've mentioned this because this is a time when when all black operations take place. You mm -hmm. know, a long time ago, yes, uh, somebody produced a fake. Uh, medical report on Miriam. Remember mm -hmm. that? Yes, yes. Which turned out to be false. And so you must be prepared for all kinds of, of, of these kinds of uh, operations at this time yes. and challenge the people who, who claim that they have proof of uh, a certain intent of the Comelic to cheat. Because it's, it's very important to the credibility of the, of the count. Yes. For the Comelic not to be under a cloud at this time. Do you think, uh, Chairman Monsod, that the credibility of Comelec is on, uh, on tender hooks at this time? No. I, I think there's a lot of people who still trust uh, the Comelec and all the more reason why the Comelec would, uh, should challenge all accusations of, uh, of manipulation. Mm -hmm. this, this is a good time to do it because okay. it's the eve of, of election day. Okay. It, you know, not only because it's, it's not about just the credibility, it's about the fact that people might be discouraged to vote and mm -hmm. say, what type of vote? Oh? Eh, hindi naman bibilangin. Uh, oh, hindi, hindi bibilangin, o yari na yan, o mm -hmm. kung ano nang ginawa dyan, di ba? Mm -hmm. And we should not, eh. we should, we should mm -hmm. tell people to vote. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, those who are reluctant to say, hindi, talo na eh. Mm -hmm. We should tell them, you vote because it's your vote who will determine the winnability of your candidate. Right, right. Okay. Aside from this, um, the receipt differing from the, the vote that you put that in. That they claim. That they claim they put in, yes. right? And it has not been verified. You're saying, you're urging people to verify these complaints so that Comelec can debunk? No, right now, they have to verify the accusations on what happened during the testing. Uh -huh. Right? This okay. happened last week, right? Yes, yes. All right. Then, then on the day of election itself, there are rules. When it does not, uh, when the match, they don't match, then you go 
and report it to the Board of Election Inspectors. Mm -hmm. What is not clear in the rules, uh, and I, uh, maybe this is also public information, is what happens then. Uh, because these uh, this, uh, receipts that are claimed not to be the same as the vote mm -hmm. should be put in a separate box. They're not part of to be destroyed and thrown away. But is it actionable, for example, if my receipt is differs from what I voted and I complain about it? Can action be taken there immediately? Was some, there was some saying that uh, if it is clear uh, that, that them, this might have happened, that they might issue extra, extra ballots. Change your ballot. Yeah, give them new ballot yes. right? and, and reject the other one. Yes. Right? And then, uh, but that, 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 uh, that's a little dangerous also because uh, uh, that could be massive. Mm. No? So, mm -hmm. and Why I don't think there are enough uh, extra, extra ballots, ballots yes. to do that. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. What are your other concerns uh, as, as we approach tomorrow? Well, my concern is, uh, is a historic, historical one because the, the, the automation was conceived in order to address cheating at the canvassing level. Now, of course, we've done it at the precinct level, which took out the public count uh, that mm -hmm. is required at this in, as a principle of, uh, of voting. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, we, we have so focused and we have so been obsessive about the, the accuracy and speed of the count mm -hmm. that we have forgotten that we may be counting with accuracy and with speed a ballot that has already been devalued by the use of money by dysfunctional political parties that limit our choices and who to vote for, and by warlords and political dynasties. Mm -hmm. So what is the value of that ballot that we are so obsessed on having a speedy and accurate count? Mm -hmm. When we haven't addressed the structural problems that stand in the way of a meaningful vote. Okay. But that's a long-term problem. But it cannot be long. That was a, that's a long-term problem. That's already 15 too to 20 long. years. Yeah, it's yeah. too long of a long-term problem. We, can, we cannot always say, well, you know, reform is evolutionary. Yes. yes. Right? It's, it's like saying, oh, we haven't addressed poverty and inequality because, because reform on the economic and social front is evolutionary. Yes. Well, it's 28 years and yes. not sufficient for evolutionary yes. solutions. How, how do you address that? I mean, what are the concrete measures that address uh, it's a policy issue. Invalid votes. I mean, no, uh, yeah, votes that this, are devalued. This is the mechanics, no? But yes. the devaluation, is, it is, it's a policy issue. And of course, the vicious cycle is the policy issues are decided by Congress. And that's where we have corrupt politicians and political dynasties. 70% okay. of Congress are from dynastic families. Mm -hmm. All right? mm -hmm. That's the problem. That's why we cannot address systemic structural problems without because addressing corrupt that. politicians and political dynasties stand in the way of those reforms. If you, my, we have always saying that if you look at all the social reform programs, all of them have a loophole. Who put them there? Okay, so we're talking about the anti-dynasty law. Corruption. Corruption. Yes. Uh, social right. reform. And they don't they don't get passed because the people who are in power yes. don't allow, stand in the yeah. way of And they passage. get elected every time. Yes. And part of the reason also is that uh, the, these same people are the ones who decide who we can vote for. That's the vicious, it's a vicious cycle. It is. And unless we attack it at the roots, we will never get the kind of reform that we promised. What people. about voter education? Why don't we turn I, to the voter? You know, I don't believe in voter education. Because people, what do, you, what do you say in a voter education? What is a candidate, vote, vote wisely, go there and vote, you know, be sure to shade and all that. No, no, don't vote for <laughs> dynasties. Yes, well, we, the, the Bishop's Businessman Conference issued a statement, came out Monday and said, who, who not to vote for? Mm. We said, mm -hmm. don't vote for corrupt politicians, political dynasties. Don't vote for people who do not want to be accountable for extrajudicial deaths. Right, so, so, but, to me, you cannot do that in a voter education campaign because you're dealing with you're, you're dealing with the frame, you know, the mental 
frame of people uh -huh. and that takes a long time to change. Yes. So what we need is civic education that's intensive, that is you know, that goes on every day and, and voter education is just a little part of civic education. Mm -hmm. Because the bottom line is love of country. So it must be you're doing this for love of country. Okay. Most everybody's doing it for another reason. I know him, he's a friend, you know, so classmate. You know, Oh, it's giving me benefits I, I, and so on and so forth. Yes. I'm, I'm struck by your statement that at the bottom of this is love of country. Um, can you teach it? Yes. You, 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 in, in civic education, love of country, you can teach it by talking about the heroes. Talking about heroes, about heroic deeds of Filipinos. So that, so that the students will say, I want to be like that. Mm. And, and, and we have many. Mm -hmm. But do we talk about them at all, mm -hmm. right? And sometimes our history books are full of revisionism, revisions on who are the heroes and you know, who are the villains who are in the our role history. models, right? Yes. You know, I was looking, for example, in the, during the Philippine Revolution, there was a there was a, a, a person who of stature and still now considered one of the you know one of the high official Filipinos, and he was trying to broker. A, 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 a deal with um, with the insurgents and the Spaniards and so on, but at the bottom line, he was promised by Spaniard with a, with a baron, you know, a title. So even then, people were talking about how do I enhance myself? What's in, in it for process? me? Yes, you, you you know, people write books about themselves. But that's that's. that's they, they try yeah. to revise history. Are right? you saying we are a damaged culture? No, I say that we, we are we are we are a culture that needs a lot of rethinking. You know, Father, is it Father Arevalo was uh, telling uh, with Archbishop Sok. We're talking about it. And Archbishop Sok said, you know, Father Arevalo said that there is one thing that we Filipinos seem uh, don't like to do, and that is reflecting, reflecting and thinking. That's why in elections, what do they do? Do they read? Do they research? No. They ask their friend, a person you know they him? respect, no, who are you voting for? Uh -huh. Right? Uh -huh. Who yes. are you voting for? Yes. And they say, pa, pwede niyo, kasi ikaw ang ano eh. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And where we should be individually reflecting. Mm -hmm. and, and that, if, if you look at the, our elections today, that's how it is. There's a herd mentality. Okay, why is that? People ref don't like to reflect. Why not? Apparently, and this is <laughs> that, that we have a culture like we're lazy about doing thinking. We're right? lazy about thinking. About thinking, about reflecting, about you know thinking about issues in a larger, in a broader scale. Is um, it because um, they don't affect us directly? No, it's just, you know maybe we were just taught the wrong way. When I was young, I was taught I was told about American heroes, George Washington, Abraham Lincoln. They have very little. You uh, know more about the cherry tree than you do uh, about. Know, the yes, and, and, and you know, I will, even even our schools, Ateneo, they don't let you speak your Tagalog your or Filipino. Uh, no, you have to speak in English, right? Yes, you, you were, were fine for every Tagalog yeah, word that you we spoke. We were the elite. We were the elite, and precisely yes. our problem is the elite yes. in this country. Yes. Anyway, so yes. to me, when, when it, I can see you know the elections, and I'm I'm really. I'm really very anxious and concerned that after the elections, it's business as usual. Mm. You don't think that the the voting public has moved forward in terms yes, of its awareness, in uh, terms yeah, of its I think, concern I think for the country? One, that's one reason for the Duterte phenomenon. Yes. Right? Because people uh -huh. seem to be saying, we want something different. Uh -huh. But what is not clear is what kind of difference do you want? You know, when you look at the programs, I was, I was telling a, an audience, they asked, they asked me to speak about it, and I said, you know, not a single presidential candidate talked about social reform. Mm -hmm. And yet, and yet, that's what we promised uh, the poor in Edsa. And that's why in the Constitution, we wrote a Constitution whose heart was social justice. But even today, when you look at Supreme Court decisions, they forget it. It's not the central thing. It's not even a subject matter of the bar. 
when that's the heart of the Constitution. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is, is social justice and mm -hmm. the poor as the center of development? Mm -hmm. When is it ever going to come? So what is your, what is your opinion? Why haven't we paid attention to it? Because those in the ruling elite, which, where the power revolves only in within a small few, are status quo people. That's why maybe there's so much hope in Duterte that he may be different from the present. So the, the level of awareness, the social consciousness, of the voter is has now been raised. Is there, is there, well, it actually, if you look at 1998 with Estrada, Estrada won, right? Yes. Now, I think what, 75, 80% of the DNE, the poor, voted for him. That tells you something about the need of change. Except that they picked the wrong champion, correct? <laughs> he because, was part of the elite. Well, no, but also, he had, I think he genuinely was compassionate to the poor, mm -hmm. but he had a bigger addiction for something else, which is money. <laughs> now, in the, so what did the poor do in 1984? Half went to Arroyo and half went to Pope. That tells you something about, you know, about the intelligent vote of the poor. Mm -hmm. But given the limited choices they're given, uh, it, it takes a long time for them to have the right choices. That's why. My advocacy is this, and my advocacy is this. I don't think you will ever change mm -hmm. until we have a new generation of leaders who know how it is to be poor. You think that's the answer? Yes. And so when, when our friends from the, from the farmers and the indigenous people said, Paano po natin gagawin yan? E wala na yung pera. Yeah, you'll never get there. And I say, control the barangays first because you are a majority in the barangays. And now there is a law that's opening the door to banning political dynasties in barangays. Kaya lang, one degree lang, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, but I mm -hmm. said, start mm -hmm. controlling the barangays. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In the next elections, go for the municipalities. Uh -huh. And then they'll listen to you. Okay. And then you'll have your own leaders. Yes. Young, new leaders who know how it is to be, to be poor, poor and have not been seduced by money. Wow, that's fantastic. Thank you very much for your words of wisdom and uh, for somebody who has been chairman of Comelec and is now looking at a different angle of the elections. Thank you, Christian Monsod. Thank you for being with us and good luck to all of us for tomorrow. Thank, Thank you. you. We'll be right back.